everybody. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Roseanne Hansen um, of Exploring Overlands Field Arts Institute and the author of Nature Journaling for a Wild Life. Uh, again, thank you for, for joining us today. It's going to be fun. It's going to be something a little different. I'm, I'm doing a completely uh, field trip, a virtual field trip, and we'll have a lot of fun with that today. I'm joined by Grace Howard. Grace, if you can speak again so you pop up there. Hi, everyone. Grace is our field arts uh, logistics tech associate at Exploring Overland. And she's a, a, an overland adventurer, a Land Rover owner and mechanic. Um, so Grace is studying environmental sciences and Spanish in the honors program at Northern Arizona University. So she will be running the tech end of things, if you have problems, what have you, uh, and, and uh, responding on chat, Grace is the one who's gonna be helping you. So I'm gonna turn it over to Grace right now. So she's gonna give a, a little bit of housekeeping information uh, regarding Zoom. So everyone, um, generally keep your mute on. Um, a tip is to, in the top, um, top right corner, there's a button to switch to speaker view from gallery view. Um, that way, whoever's talking is the is big. Um, there's a chat button at the bottom. That's where you'll write your questions and we'll get those and um, uh, try to keep any like personal um, co conversations out of the group chat. There's a button that you can switch between who you're chatting between everyone and specific people. So if you were wanting to have a personal conversation, um, switch to just talking with that person so that um, we, it's easier to find questions. Um, I think that's it. Yep, that, that sounds good. Uh, and again, if you have problems, go into chat, send a chat to Grace and she can help you maybe troubleshoot things or, or what have you. She'll be um, uploading and posting things as well in the chat. So when we say that we are sharing something, you'll wanna look in the, the chat box for, for those uh, links, documents, or, or data that, that Grace is going to be doing. All right, so um, the goal of this, this workshop today is to have fun. And we're gonna explore a new place together, or new for a lot of us, uh, if virtually. And together we will work on journal entries and sketches as we go. I will talk about how I do things, why I'm choosing what I'm doing. I'll just sort of give you a brain dump as I go, because I think as people are learning that, uh, that really helps is like, well, why are you doing that? Why did you choose that? Or, or why are you drawing it that way? Uh, I'm a minimalist nature journaler, and I tend to do 90 to 100% of my entries and sketching right there on site uh, in the field. I love data, you'll see. I'm, I'm definitely a science nerd, a data nerd. Um, I'm a naturalist and biologist, that's my background. So I always include as much information about where I'm going, where I am, what I'm seeing as I, as I can for future reference. Because my, my journals end up being references for me for, for books on natural history, articles, um, expeditions I might be joining, things like that. Uh, I am uh, definitely, so my, my focus on my journals, my uh, field, field notes and entries is the, the, the nature data. It's not about perfect drawings. I use the drawings, the sketches to study what I'm seeing and it really enhances my enjoyment of an area because I'm studying it to sketch it. I'm not learning to sketch. And if you kind of put that out of your mind, like don't get all gripped if you're just getting started sketching, just don't think about it. I know that's like impossible, but um, try to focus on just what you're seeing. And I never, I, well, I try not to have these rules and ideas that my sketches have to be perfect. I'm not a trained artist. I'm totally self-taught just in the last few years online classes. 
Um, remember that people like John Muir Law studied art in school in addition to biology, but he has an art degree. And so do a lot of people you see who have these like really perfect, gorgeous pages. Um, so try not to think about that so much. Um, so that's kind of my journaling style. Grace is going to uh, put up the first poll. What is your nature journaling and field sketching style? While I get going on setting up our field trip here. So do that poll while I do this. All right. Well, we are going to get started on our uh, virtual field trip to Yellowstone National Park. I'm going to take you from the faraway view all the way down and tell you where we're going as we go. And uh, if you have questions and things, um, put them in the chat. Any, any technical difficulties that we're seeing? Grace, are we good to go? Mm -hmm. yes. We're good to go. All right, here we go. We are heading to Yellowstone National Park in North America. And I completely forgot to <laughs> give my own bio. Um, I'm the, the art and science coordinator at the uh, laboratory, uh, the Desert Laboratory on Tumamoc Hill. And here we go to Yellowstone National Park. Our first stop is the Norris Geyser Basin. And while we're, we're start stopping here, Grace is going to share with you uh, the, the, the weather and location data for um, Norris Geyser Basin in the chat. So look for that in a minute because you'll see when I switch to the journal, we're going to be uh, entering our location data, where we are and, and so forth and so on. So the Norris Geyser Basin is, is a really cool spot. And I, I picked here first because it, it's got the geysers, but it's not Old Faithful, so we can sort of get away from people and, and see this beautiful, uh, the landscape and, and very iconic. It's surrounded by these pine trees, which I'm pretty sure are lodgepole pines. I would want to take a, a close look at the needles on these. I'm looking at them here. I can't get quite close enough, but um, lodgepole pines um, have two needles per group. And I'm pretty sure that's, that's what that is. Um, there are two other pines that could be there, limber and white bark. And it could be a fir, but I don't think it is. So here we're looking at this beautiful basin. And this has got numerous small geysers, um, hot spots. The water in the pools um, rarely reaches below boiling point, so it's really hot. Uh, about 199 degrees Fahrenheit at this elevation. And a drill hole here recorded the temperature of 459 degrees in, in underneath. Um, that's the hottest uh, water recorded in the park. So it's a pretty significant spot. It's also pretty interesting that with all this acidic soil that all these, these trees are growing around there. So they're pretty tough. It's also a home to the steamboat geyser which when it's active, um, it's located just off the screen here, but the steamboat geyser can be up to like 400 feet tall. It's completely unpredictable and sometimes goes dormant. So this shows you a good overview. And what I'm doing when I get to a new place, something like this, I'm looking around, I'm noticing the pine trees I already mentioned. Uh, I, might have done a little bit of research ahead of time about the, the water temperature and this and that, or I stopped and looked at the interpretive signs, which are really excellent here. But next I'm gonna be looking for a view that I might start with in my, my journal. And because I feel like geysers are, are pretty iconic to Yellowstone, which is you know, part of the, um, the enormous uh, uh, basin, the caldera, the Yellowstone caldera, which was formed about 600,000 years ago. Um, I think I want to draw this. I love this view of this basin, the beautiful mountains in the background, and that's going to give me a nice overview. I usually like to start with an overview uh, image to sketch. So I think that's what I'm going to start with. Uh, 
you might you know have a completely different approach but this is this is generally how i start so i'm going to switch now to my journal view so you can see that is that now showing yes great okay All right, Grace, if you could mute yourself right now, that'll help, I think, with, um, you keep popping up on my screen, so perfect, thank you. All right, so I have started an entry, this was to save a little bit of time. You can see the view that I chose. Um, I always start, and a lot of you have seen this already, but I always start with, uh, the metadata, the data that goes with all your nature data. And that is, you know, what is the date? Where are we? The latitude and longitude, uh, elevation, 7,500 feet. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to weather. My, my dad really got me into weather when I was young. He built me a weather station and everything. Um, so I always put sunrise. This is sunrise, sunset. And that's the moon phase. We're just a day past full. It'll rise at 10, set at 6 a.m. I'll put the, the, the low and the high temperatures. And then this is where my weather data gets really nerdly. Um, my, I put the, the um, symbols for cirrus clouds and stratus clouds there. And this is the, um, the cloud cover percent and the wind speed and direction. It's pretty pretty mild, although you can see in the photo, <laughs> or as we're, we're here at the, at the Geyser Basin, it's kind of the wind is blowing the, um, the, the geysers to the right of the screen there. So uh, then I'll, I'll take some notes on, on what I'm seeing. This is how I get warmed up. Uh, I'm at the Norris Geyser Basin, which sits on the Norris Mammoth Corridor and um, Hebgen Lake Faults. This fault is actually pretty young. Um, I think it, it was only about, if I'm recalling correctly, only about 15,000 years ago. Now I can't remember now, I'll need to look that up. Um, but it's also a site of a, there was a major earthquake in this area in 1959, a 7.4 earthquake. So it's very active geologically. Uh, I wrote down what I, talked about earlier that, that the boiling point, the steamboat geyser is a biggie, um, unlikely to see it though this, this time. Um, the blue color that we're seeing in a lot of the pools is from dissolved silica and the orange, there's several oranges, but the, the rusty orange is iron oxides and arsenic compounds. And then there's a brighter orange in the pools and that's cyanobacteria. So I'm going to do a quick landscape sketch here, a landscape ito, as John Muir Law says, Oops. which I really like that. Um, and I think I think what I'm going to do is is put that at the bottom of this page because it's kind of starting me out. And what I do is I I go ahead and give myself a a light bounding box here. I'm, I'm still, I'm still writing, pr uh, scribing pretty lightly here. And what I want to capture is those mountains in the background, the tree, the forests, the pool, and some of those, those geysers, which you can see on the right, there's actually quite a few in that basin. And I'm going to go ahead and use some license and say, well, some of them are coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch those. So I'm looking for the major shapes here. And what I want to do is, is bring in this foreground shape first. And when you're doing these sketches, you don't have to be really precious about how perfect it is. Um, we're trying to catch the essence of this, not, not do a perfect studio drawing. This is nature journaling. We're trying to capture what's going on. So here's a, here's a shape I'm pulling in of the, where the geysers are. I'm just 
lightly sketching that in. I've got a, a hill and a horizon kind of going here. That's going to meet with that hill. And um, just to remind me that these are kind of swoop down. So those shapes look pretty, pretty good. I'll be darkening these up and, and using colors so you can, can see them. Um, let me go ahead and make this a little darker so you can see it. I'll be putting the trees on top of this and I'm leaving this a little light so I can put my geysers up there. And then how about those, those mountains? Let's sketch in some mountain shapes. And there's some, uh, I wanna be sure to remind myself to leave the, the snow forms on those. So I'm gonna give those a little bit of, that's just to remind me not to fill it all in blue. And then down here, okay, so we have, here's our kind of foreground. And then there's a, Cool here, I want to be sure to include. Oh, I went kind of far to the right. I'm going to pull that back a little. Again, I'm not being super precious about exact here. This is another basin here. And then there's these great, I uh, just want to mark this, the, where the interesting colors are kind of coming in here. And again, these are kind of, we've got the darks and the grays here. So I'm sketching that in just scribble, scribble. I'm not, I'm not trying to be super, super perfect here. Now I want to mark these, these geysers so I don't fill them in. So I'm going to go ahead and make them come up a little higher than they are in like real life because I want them to really show. Um, so we'll pretend it's they're going straight up and there's actually one you can't quite see there that in the middle that's coming up. So I'm going to add another one here. So we get more of the geyser fill. And then let's let's drop in these shapes for some, some of the trees. So we mark those. I hope you guys are sketching along. You can be doing your own thing. Zoom in on one thing. Maybe you just want to zoom in on that pool or guys or um, make this tree just a little smaller here. This helps give us scale to, um, and shows that this is the foreground. And um, give that a little bit more definition. I don't use rulers, um, I have one, but I think I, I just prefer to go for it. And sometimes it's a little wobbly. Um, you have to remember not to touch that for a minute. Um, so there's like a dead pine here. I'm gonna leave, leave that like that. And a few more trees, although I'm going to probably drop a lot of those in just with the paint. Um, but that gives me a good start. Now I want to go in and I want to identify this dark swatch here. This is going to help define the, 
the geysers to the stark, and then these are trees starting out. So I'm, I'm going to give these the little pointy tops. And I'll be filling those in now. I think I'll start dropping in some color now. I use waterproof ink, so this is dries pretty fast. And um, first, I'm going to do something. I showed some of you who, are, who took the class, uh, workshop last week. I use um, waxed paper. And here you can see I've marked the top of the wax paper, so the wax is underneath. And I'm going to go ahead and, and fill these um, by making my own wax resist real quick with a dull pencil. I'm going to make sure that I can, if I accidentally paint over this, I've, I've reserved my little geysers so they will stay stay uh, white. That's a fun trick. You can just keep these in, keep this in your, in your uh, kit. Well, I'm, I'm probably going to leave that one. I, I, I hope I don't accidentally paint over it. All right. Now, as some of you have seen, my normal sketching kit is my little minimalist kit sits right here at the top of my, my uh, notebook. And I can walk and leave this here. It's all secured. I am going to move out for this, the demos though, because it ends up getting it in the way uh, and you can't see what I'm doing. So I'm removing that for now. All right. Let's put some color in here. How are we doing, Grace? Is everybody doing well? I have a couple questions so far. Okay. Um, what kind of paper do you prefer? Oh, that's a good question. So I normally use, it's fairly inexpensive, B, B, E, E, as in the buzzy B, um, watercolor paper, 90 pounds. It's light enough. Um, that it's not super bulky like a 140 pound would be. Um, takes the watercolor really well. It, it's also not really um, uh, heavily textured. So it, it takes the, the ink nicely too. All right, so I'm also, like I said, a minimalist. I just used um, a triad and then two extra colors. So I use um, manganese blue or cerulean, whatever is available, um, quinacridone rose, and a, a neutral yellow, which is um, chrome yellow or aureolan yellow, and then burnt sienna and andanthrone blue. And this is the same yellow that I keep clean for when I want just pure yellow, so it, I can use this one for mixing. So what I'm going to do is start, I want to, I want to kind of a, a gray, a light gray for that background, or not background, but um, the, the grayish tone of, of the middle ground, and, and most of it, it's just not very green, is it? It's just pretty, pretty darn gray blue see how that is. I don't want it to be super dark, so. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to fill it in like 100%. So I'm, I'm going to keep it pretty. Uh, just pretty light right there. And there's, there's a little bit in here. And I'm going to warm it up with a little bit of burnt sienna here and, and get some of this in here. I'm keeping it light and um, some 
somewhat dry brush so I get a little texture. Let that settle in, maybe do a little bit. Oop, I'm gonna warm that up a little bit. Just trying to get the edge there. What else have I got? All right about that sky? I think I'm going to drop in some blue. I'm not going to worry a whole lot about the clouds today. Um, here I am uh, putting just clear water. I'll probably leave a little clouds, but I want to get some blue behind there too. I'm just going to use the, the manganese blue. I want blue around this geysers to uh, enhance that. Maybe get some, just a little bit of the clouds in there. Um, let's see if I can get that to focus a little closer there that's that'll show up more as it as it dries you're getting a bit of the re reflection right now all right so we've got a little bit of the sky treatment there that'll show much better when it dries so all right and then using um the endown throne blue I'm going to, oh, you know what? I'm not going to do, I was going to do those, but there's still some damp around there. So I risk a, a big bloom into the sky. So let me enhance the, uh, this part here. This, this guy here, the geyser basin, I'm going to drop in just the tiniest, barest blue because even though the image that we're looking at, this has a really cool kind of turquoisey color. So I, I want to just give that the barest bit of turquoisey. And now let's get that cool uh, orangey the iron oxides in there. I want that to be a little bit more yellow. That's going to lighten up a little there, this, this blork here. Pull that back a little bit. <laughs> that got just got a little out of control, didn't it? I'm just giving this a tiny bit of definition. This is going to dry a lot lighter. Now let's um, want to give this some some more color and depth there. 
I don't want to just, I don't want to overdo this here. All right. Now I can go in and hit those mountains, I hope. Oops, a little bit. Using a darker blue because they're they're really far away. I don't want them to pop forward. I'm leaving those the snowy bits. Now I'm going to mix a, a dark green. Using that in Dan Throne and hit some of these trees. And then we'll we'll get to see. our geysers pop out a little bit. And I think I'll, let's see, get our green in here and then we'll be moving on soon so I can finish up more in a bit. Um, can always come back and after things dry out a little better and enhance things and add a little bit more, uh, maybe some pen work, um, fix the color and add some shadows and things too. But this is turning out to be a, a pretty fun little landscapey toe. I'm gonna add a little bit more light green and just dab a little bit in here to get us some some of the the foreground definition just a little more detail I use my fingers a lot. <laughs> right, I think I'll let this dry and then I'll come back um, and enhance some of the, the shadows a bit later. But I think, let's see if we can get that to show a little bit better. I know what I'll do. So, there we go. I'm gonna turn down this light for a minute. It's this, um, the light I need for the drawing, but it tends to blow out the um, there so you can see that a bit. I'll come in and fix this a little bit later. But you know, I think I like this little landscape Ito. Um, and that's a great start. So I think what we'll do next is happy with that. I will be turning my page as soon as that dries, but let's um Let's go back and see where else we're gonna go because we're gonna cover some ground today. And, um, oh, I already see a spot where, I, see, I tend to wanna go back and back and back and that's one of the things I keep reminding people, you know, it's okay to move on and come back to this later um, and don't overwork things. I wanna keep this pretty simple. And if I keep adding to it, I'm afraid I'm going to overwork it. So it's like in my book, this is what I say, stop, don't overwork it. Um, you can always add things. It's much harder to pull things off once you you blork on something or or mess it up. So that's a great great start. So where else are we going to go today?
So our next stop, we're about to zoom out, is going to be the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, which is an incredibly beautiful, uh, huge canyon. The canyon is about 10,000, only 10,000 or so years old, maybe 14,000 years. Um, it was created by the fault activity we were talking about. So this was probably the Hadkin or the, uh, the, the fall I was talking about earlier is probably close to this time. Uh, it's about 800 to 1200 feet deep, 1500 to 4000 feet wide, um, and that is the Yellowstone River. And very, very dramatic and beautiful. If you know Thomas Moran paintings, uh, he, he has some of, of this that are just spectacular. So I'm going to, let's see. We're going to look around here. And the best way to do that is to come down to this overlook. So we'll have to have driven around and now we're going to head down to an overlook. Zoom right in there. This is the fun part of Google, Google Earth. And look what we can see at this overlook, this amazing waterfall, which is not the biggest one, but it's certainly spectacular. And I think that I'm going to, to do a quick little sketch of that um, on, the, on the next page of my, my journal and start thinking about how I'm going to do some more pages, um, designing it kind of as I go. I don't I don't pre-design, some people do. They'll draw boxes ahead of time, which is a great way to kind of give yourself some, some tips and ideas. Um, but let's, uh, let's do just a quick, quick sketch here of this waterfall. And like I did with the um, Norris Basin, I'm going to focus on shapes and not get too, too precious here. Let me give you just a slightly bigger view uh, or, or, or taller view so you can see both pages for a moment. Mostly. Um, I think what I'm going to do is put the, the waterfall over here. And one of the fun things that I like to do is to put a map in, and I'm gonna just leave a spot for a, a, a map later. So let me zoom back in here and let's get a map going. So I'm going to leave a box here. of a, a map because I'm not sure exactly where else I'll go today but I want to be sure to sort of leave this for a map and now over here let's let's put in that that waterfall um I think it's it's uh Just one of my favorite favorite things in, in Yellowstone is all this this beautiful topography and, and water. And look, these look like pines again. Um, so again, I'm, I'm gonna start with a, I tend to start with a bounding box. But I'm gonna leave that kind of light there. And the bounding box keeps me from kind of overdoing things. Um, it gives me a place to start. So I'm going to focus on shapes and keep it pretty simple. So kind of the first thing I want to do is, is this rock shape here. I'm going to make the waterfall kind of come in here as a rock, I mean like that. Um, these kind of swoop down. There's that cleft. Um, let's give the, the waterfall its top. 
like so. And then there's another shape coming up like that. And then the, the falls come down. I'm going to go ahead and kind of dot in the, the spray. So I remember to leave that, that cloud of water there. And, but I'm, I'm going to dot in the, um, the waterfall. And these are just tiny little, little dots to give it its, it's, you can see the, the, the vertical water rivulets coming down. And then there's that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in foreground trees to give this a frame. So let's just taking a little bit of license here. These are just my foreground trees that are going to come down. Again, this is just very, very sketchy. These are just remind this is just our our trees in the closer to us. Um, then I think what I'm going to do is have a little fun with this. I can see that the this this comes down. There's a little bit of topography here. The, the river comes down. And then we, we've got cliffs and things coming down here. So I'm, I'm just sketching those in real quick like that. But what I'm gonna have fun with is, is the river is going to come out here and let's, let's, have it, let's have it flow onto our page like that. Here's the river coming out, that's kind of fun. So why not have fun with that? And you don't have to get super detailed. You're trying to capture the essence here. Um, there's trees down here. We want to be sure to keep, keep this in the foreground. These trees are small and down below. And let's just put a few more in here. And I'm not going to put a super amount of detail there. How much of the background do I want to do? I think I'll, I'll just pull in a, the mountains like that in the background and we're going to have our, the pine forest will come down. Here, we're going to want to show a little bit of trees here. Again, don't go too crazy in detail. You can hit it with the the watercolor. I'm not going to bother with that rock in the background. I think it'll be distracting. So let's just have fun with it. Just a little sketchy there. And um, get some texture on this rock here. Now there's these the really dark areas next to the waterfall are, are important because that's what's going to give us the, the definition and make the, the white pop out and be a, a waterfall. All right, I'm going to start dropping in color now and have, have fun with that. Let's see. Any questions so far? Oh, you're muted, Grace. Sorry. You're right. Um, we've got a couple questions. Okay. Um, Andrea asked what the waterproof ink you use is. Oh, yeah. So that is uh, uh, platinum carbon. Platinum is the brand of ink, um, carbon being the, the black. Um, and 
I use fountain pens usually. Um, I can show some at, at the end there um, to when, when, when we, when we kind of come up at the end, I can, I can show some of those. So um, on the colors here, I'm wanting to get some of that peachy yellowy rock. So I'm using a little bit of the burnt sienna and I want to make that pretty, pretty light here. And notice I'm, I'm like sketching in the, the shape that I want it to go. get that focus a little better. Is that showing up okay, Grace? It's a little washed out. Tell you what, let me try this. That's a little better, isn't it? Yes. Now I, now I can hardly see. <laughs> I'm going to have to turn that up or you guys are going to get the strangest colors. So I'll keep trying to go back and forth um, to, to show. I'm, I'm dropping in some of my pine trees here. So I want to get this, this forest going. Um, the ones that are closer to me, I'm going to make a lighter green so I can reserve that darker green to show farther away for us. This, I'll be going in and enhancing this with pen later as well. So let's get some of these guys down here. And I darken this up a little bit. Let's see, need a little bit more. I'm trying to keep a balance between dry brush and really wet. You don't want really, really wet. Um, this paper I'm having to use is not my favorite B paper, um, which was out of stock forever. So uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't behave um, the way I really prefer. Um, so I'm, I'm having to, uh, not use as much water as I normally do. Because it just doesn't behave well on this, this paper. All right, let me get the um, I want to do a little bit. Let me get those dark, the dark forest in the background real quick. 
So this, I'm just going to make a really dark bluey green so it pushes way back. And then I want to keep keep this a little, um, I want to like solid here because I'm going to go in and add definition. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit so I can come back and add a little bit more definition. Any other questions? What kind of brush are you using? This is an Isobay Squirrel is the, uh, the hairs. Um, travel brush. So it folds up into its own tip. And this one's many years old. It's super tough. Another good one is um, Rosemary and Co. has some um, really nice travel brushes as well that I really like that are, that are squirrel. And you can get those from um, Maria Coriel Martin's uh, Expeditionary Art website. And then another question we had was, is the, is your pen one with its own ink reservoir? The pen has, a, yes, a, a suction reservoir, oops, a, this is a piston that sucks the ink up into it. So you just have to carry like a little baby Nalgene um, when you're out in the field and then you, you don't run out of, of ink. So um, I, like, I like that a lot. All right, just going to enhance the waterfall just a tiny bit at the base and then we'll probably move on. Used a darker blue for farther away to try to approximate the, um, the water pools. Again, I'm not coloring it in solid. I'm trying to leave a lot of, a lot of white. And, um, and then I'm going to take the, just the barest hint of tint and, and see if I can't just get a tiny bit of definition with tiny little vertical lines in this waterfall, which let's see if we can. get that to show a little bit there. So I'm going to come back in when this, in a, when it dries, come on, focus. And I'm going to add more tree definition here, darker pine tree ease. Um, this will, you'll be able to see this has the blue in it to give it. And then I'm going to maybe add a little bit of gray and shadow in here. I um, mean, you can see where my, my, uh, River comes out there, which is kind of fun. So, and then I'll, I'll be coming back in here with the pen and drawing more of my trees and enhancing some of the shadows in here to give that more like, so you can really see the trees. So I'll be drawing them in with the ink once it's dry. So let's, um, excuse me, and now I think if everybody's uh, got at least a start on the little waterfall there, um, we're going to continue on because there's a lot to see and do. Um, I want to want to hit the next area at the very least. Let's see where we're going to go to. We are going to head to a different landscape. 
So this is parklands, more open country. And you can see it's dominated by meadows, long views, and check this out. So really beautiful. This is iconic plant. This is uh, big sagebrush, Artemisia tridentata, one of my favorite plants ever, ever. And this is what it looks like. So you know what I'm going to do is go in real quick to my, my journal because this is a major kind of, it's, it's one of the things you're going to smell when you're there. This just has a gorgeous scent. So I want to get this sage in here. So it's Artemisia tridentata. So you can see there, um, it has three lobes at the top of each leaflet. So I'll quick say, okay, I think I'll, I think I'm just going to do a quick reminder here. You know what I might do too, is I might go um, probably grab some and I'll either tape it into my journal or put it in a plastic bag and save it. And I might even rub some of it onto the journal and it will impart some of that gorgeous scent. So I just want to make a quick plant note here. Um, Let's, let's sketch the, why is it called Artemisia tridentata? Um, it's this, this three lobes. And I've actually not quite got that right. I wanna, these are more or less the same. So I do straight to pen, so my, my mistakes show that's okay. And this is more or less life size. So I want to put that times one means it's one X, so it's, it's life size. And so I want to say it's about 1.5 inch leaf. And each one has a center little vein running right down like that. And then I would go in and probably just, just start by it's, it's a beautiful blue green color, but what I'm gonna do is, is lay down a really light yellow wash to start because that's gonna give it brightness. I use lifting watercolors so um, it doesn't stain so I can go in and remove <laughs> when I'm, when I don't accidentally touch it with green, which is on my finger, um, I could have removed that, but I just added pigment because I, I had dirty hands. Um, and then I can go in and, and, and hit some of that really pretty blue green color over top of the... So that was just a really quick capture. I'm gonna leave that like that. So it's kind of looks like it's glowing because um, the reason we're in this valley is this is one of the best areas in Yellowstone for bison. It's the largest herd. Um, bison, bison is the genus and species. And so that's what we're going to be looking for. And indeed, if we look up there on the right is the bison and I'm going to want to sketch that guy before he runs away and um, that's going to be fun because animals are definitely a challenge. So let's just go ahead and go for it. Um, using the same approach of finding the shapes and using just the shapes. Don't think, don't think about bison we're gonna be going shapes and measuring. So I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to pen. And I think I'm gonna, oh, and this is like my favorite because um, his feet are, are like not showing. So I'm totally cheating, but that means I don't have to draw hooves and feet and legs, which are really hard. So yay, we get a break here. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna do the, the Bottom. I'm going to give myself where am I starting. So here's where I'm starting. This is the, the grass and forbs around it. And then I'm going to start by, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put his, his rear right about there. 
and I'm just making a little mark. And then I'm going to make his other shoulder, the other side of him, over here. Now, I'm looking at him, I can see him in the field, and I, I kind of hold up my measure, and I, I can actually see from the aspect that he is right now that his width and then the height to the to highest part of his shoulder, it's about the same. So what I want to do in my notebook is mark, okay, there's the width. It's the easiest way to do this. Um, there's the, the width that I have, and it's going to be, let me do this a different way. So there's the width more or less. Oh, it's right to the ferrule or that the, there. And so I'm going to mark more or less that's where I want that. I just put a little dot. That's where I want to put the highest point. So now I've got a, a bit of a structure here. Um, so that's his shoulder, that big lump. And then the big shape, I'm, I'm just going to very lightly, the, this is one big, big shape I'm looking at here. His head all the way down with that big rough. And then the, the next shape is this it's almost a triangle thing with his bum, his bottom. I'm just looking at the shape. Don't look at, don't look at the animal. As John Muir Law says, don't look at the bird. Okay, now the next shape I'm gonna do real quick that I wanna get right is, is his, little, his little top knot thing. So let's I want to be sure to get that. Um, so I, I put that in the right place. Okay, got that. Okay. And now is um, the ne next most important thing is his nose and eyes. So again, I'm going to look at this and um, his, his head. So from his top knot to his nose. Um, I'm looking at this is, it's about as, his head is about half his whole from the top of his shoulder to where we can see down there. So I'm gonna wanna make that head a lot longer than, than I, I, if I, I would have thought. So his nose, I want to put right about here. Just going to mark that real, real gently there. Let's, let's see how that looks. Let's see how it works. Let's just pull up the, the nose here. Oh, yeah, that hits the top knot pretty well. Since I like that, I'm going to go ahead and put this little, this little horn in there. And um, then that helps me place the other horn, which curves, so this curves in, so I want to get this right, like that. Okay, I kind of like that. And now his eye, I'm, I'm just going to I'm gonna put that, he has a big, there's a lot of um, bear around his eye. So I'm kind of marking that. And then let's, just gonna go for it on his eye here. If you, if you mess up eyes, it's, it's really hard. I'm, I'm more or less happy with that. So let me get his nose in here. So I've got a pretty blocky nose here. Now, how am I going to do the rest of this? Oh, let me let me just do his his uh, rear leg here. I've got his belly coming up, legs coming down. 
And you can just see his, his other leg back in there. Oh, you can actually see his hardware in there. Ha! That's funny. That one's kind of in the background, so I'm, I'm darkening that a little bit. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to try something different. I'm going to switch to a ballpoint pen that's water soluble. And I'm going to, I'm not going to watercolor him. I'm going to just do ink. Um, cause doing watercolor on him would be really hard. It would take a long time. Um, and I think I can do something really kind of fun with the water soluble ink. And, um, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to define his hair and his top knot just with ink strokes. Um, cause I, I want this to be like, show that he's very fluffy and also so let's get this his, the way his top knot comes down and he's got kind of this thing going on i'm focusing mostly on his on his head because that's what's so uh prominent in in bison um, they are just look like all head. Now there's, he's got quite a bit of this, this rough going on here. So let me, I'm going to use some dots here to make sure I get it right. So it comes way down and he's actually, it's kind of up here. He's got this beard. I want to get this beard going here. And then it's got more rough going there. And let's let's define this now. But otherwise, I'm going to, I don't want to, I want to, don't want to do it, overdo it. So I'm, I'm doing a little bit at a time. There's a second. Kind of rough going here. And then his. More of his body coming around this side. Now, I want to define this a little bit to show what a broad face he has coming down here. There's really not a lot of definition. But that really kind of enhances that that look that he's, this is a substantial guy with a lot of dark in here. Keeping his back kind of fuzzy. Okay. Let's go with that for now. Um, Again, we want to be careful not to overdo this. Um, but watch, let's see what happens when I do the, uh, oops, you know what I want to do? I'm just going to get a little bit of definition on his, um, this shoulder bit that he's got here. But other than that, I'm going to let, let this fade into the background. So let's see what happens when I, I, I touch this with, with water. I'm going to give it it's like more definition.
see how that um, that does. Want that to stay darker. So I think I'm gonna leave it. I don't want to get these these horns a little dark here. I'm gonna overdo that. But you know, that's kind of like got some nice spice and stuff going on. I mean, I, I'm I'm kind of happy with that. It's not easy doing animals and um oh forgot his tail. And that really is a nice um just a quick capture of, of bison. So I would want to put, you know, like bison bison. Is the genus and species, um, some some information about them. You know, they like this is a male. I can see from <laughs> his um, hardware. So he's maybe two thousand pounds. So big guy, and um, so I would I would fill in more. And then here I would do my map of of Yellowstone. And um, there's actually one other place. I wanted to to take us real quick. We're not going to have time to to do a quick sketch there because the tours, um, it's real quick. But um, this is really cool. You have to see this. This is like the coolest thing about Yellowstone. This is the Grand Prismatic Spring. I also think it would be like completely awesome to to do a, a, a sketch of this, a painting of this, but it would be super challenging, and we don't have enough time. Um, right now, but one thing we can do when you don't have enough time to do a complete sketch um, is, so this is what it looks like when you're standing there, uh, we can capture those colors by doing a colorway, which I love to do. Um, and let me show you that real quick. So I want to capture, hello, Mr. Bison, thank you. I want to capture those colors in my my notebook and so sometimes I'll just throw in um, color dots um, if you if you seen, I'm sure you've seen these so I mean there's like incredible bright yellow there is that turquoise green, Let's see what we get. Kind of this intermediary turquoisey green or bluish green. And there's, oh, there's that solid crazy cyan blue. I always have fun with these because then later you can you can use these um, to match things. Um, there is a really pretty orange. And then, of course, there's a really rusty, rusty, rusty looking. That's um, got more. It looks red on the screen there, but that's actually burnt sienna -y. Um, much more rusty. Um, so that gives me, you know, I'll go in and, and write. Um, so we're at uh, Grand Prismatic 
spring. And right colorway, and then I can, you know, add some some data on it. It's 370 feet diameter. And, you know, I might might sketch in here just the um, the general shape, which if if you're on the ground, there will be interpretive stations where you can get this shape, but you know, you can just capture that crazy craziness. I'm not trying to do an exact copy. Of course, it changes all the time too. Um, but this gives you, you know, a really nice, quick uh, shape of, of what it looks like. Um, like so. Um, and you can put more data in and fill that in. So what... This um, give you a little bit more of a, a view here. <laughs> Gonna have to go way up. I'm going to move this aside, make this a little bigger. There you go. So we start with a landscape veto, which I will go in and add some detail with my pen, maybe, you know, at lunch or something like that. Give that a second to refocus. And then my next page, I'll have my map. I'll fill in information, species names, more about bison, um, the spring locations, more about the, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and that's how I design a page. It's, um, there's nothing like super scientific about it. And it's just, I go with the flow naturally. So I think, you know, we're 10 minutes from, from the uh, end here. And I think it'd be fun to do if people want to share and also questions. So Grace, I want to get from you um, any questions we might have had. Not since the last time we talked okay. about them. Okay. And would anyone now, let's see, we've got 85 people on. Would anyone like to share their sketches, pages that they, they did? Okay, let's, so if you're going to share, um, hold up your, your notebook and then Grace and I are gonna try to find you on the grids. I, I've just tried to fill in whatever you had said and no. I'm just loving it. So nice I got the bison. <laughs> I'm ready to do the details as you're saying. Thank you. Grace. Yes, so, well, I didn't know, do too much. Well, so it's a bit messy, but uh, so that's how I started. So these are the marks and there's the lake, the sky, and the white bits are the clouds. And the, uh, well, it, it took quite a few pages. That's the waterfall. Uh, and there's a tester. Well, I couldn't, mm -hmm. I didn't get time to color it. And that's the bison. Oh, nice bison. There. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Those you. were awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. This is uh, Hoodoos on Mount Lemon in uh, Tucson. I go there in the winter and I like to take my sketchbook out and uh, go up on Mount Lemon and uh, 
yeah, make sketches. And this is just a pen sketch. Sometimes I take watercolors with me and do a watercolor sketch. Nice, thank you for sharing that. Like, nice pen work. All right, so here's my little landscape pito. Whoops. Let's see, how does that work? Like that, I guess. Yeah. Okay, all right. So that was really fun. And then I tried your, your little layout with the bison and the waterfall and the waterways. And that is some really nice ideas on how to add some interesting uh, detail. Thank you. It's, it's very helpful. Very helpful. Very nice. I like how you did the waterfall. Um, it's much more like a main subject and the colors and everything really popped. Notice how she did it like super simple. I think I overdid mine a little bit. I overcooked it, they say. Um, so nice, nice, simple. Yeah. And that totally looks like the waterfall. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. My in the sumi uh, rice on rice paper. The waterfall. Wow. So she said sumi ink. So she's yeah. just using ink on rice paper. Fantastic. Isn't that fun? Your, uh, your virtual <laughs> background is interfering, but we're getting most of it. So nice. So, okay, now stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's very fun. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I, I didn't hate my bison. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Like that bison. Really, really good. Doing animals is really hard. Um, yeah. You know, and that's what, what's really fun is to try to, you know, just push yourself. Um, and if you just think of it as a shape instead of, you know, oh, I'm drawing a bison. And that's not, that bison stands still for a long time. It's not like doing birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really that was really helpful to you know really kind of isolate the muscle groups and and see what shapes they were that that helped a lot and I didn't have a um, water soluble pen handy but I, I did go back over it with watercolor and kind of accomplished yeah. the same thing so exactly you could do it so many different ways yeah could have left it just, I could have left mine just plain ink without doing the wash. Hi, um, yeah, I did mine in pen and um, um, yeah, in, indelible pen, waterproof pen. And then I just went over with a little Payne's gray in watercolor and I added some of the grace, grasses at the bottom so that we didn't have to worry about hooves, feet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was so glad when that picture popped up. It's like, oh, I can do that. No, <laughs> <laughs> my hooves always look completely wrong. I need to practice um, a lot more. Thank you for sharing that. We went to Yosemite years ago, so this brought back a lot of memories. Hope you can see. Very much. Wonderful. Love that. Oh, and you, you went for it on the spring. Yay! Yeah, I think I remember going there. That was really pretty. Was it as, as, as amazing as the photos? We didn't make it to the Grand Prismatic. Oh, uh, it was more vibrant. So I was having trouble. Everything was still wet. So I was having yeah. trouble. It, it ran in. So I put the orange, but when you put it next to the green, it, you know. Yeah, that would be. But anyway, yeah, that was great. I, I decided not to tackle it because I knew I wouldn't have time for it to dry and it would just just all go but that you actually captured it really really well yes well, now I can't we can see, see what you're seeing we can see okay. it well so i started with that um uh, photo blue pencil and um and then i actually used a black watercolor pencil and then i was starting to blend it in a little bit but, so he's kind yeah, of sketchy though so. That I don't know. If, I, I can't tell, tell what you're seeing, if you can see the blue or not. Hold it up a little. But, there you go. Okay. Am I supposed to be able to see me at the same time? I don't think yeah. you can. Oh, okay. And not unless you have it set a certain way, but that, so okay. you capture the shapes and everything perfectly nice and sketchy and, and fun. So that was what it was. Well, about. I find I, I, 
like in the journaling, I, I'm tending to do more photographs and then come back and do it. But I, I'm not finding that totally satisfactory because, you know, walking and and doing it right then is, is also so nice. But, um, but so mostly I've been tending to photograph and then work on things later. Yeah, that, that's very helpful. Um, there's no rules. So, you know, doing it any way that works for you. Does anyone else want to um, to share? Allison. Wow, um, this nice spring It's fun to see the different colors. Wow, we have nailed it. <laughs> Hold your bison up again, please. You tackled it with watercolor. Beautiful. So notice how she did great shading showing. So the head, that was really hard because their heads are really cute and dark, and then they kind of fade to the the, the brighter colors. Um, and then he was backlit too, but then they're kind of russety on their butt ends. And so, and that just really nailed it. Well done, Allison. The spring's great too. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was really fun. Went by really fast. I think um, <laughs> we could really use two hours, but. Um, you know, it just, we, I think, go on your own, finish your pages. Grace is going to be sharing. Um, okay, so we have, go ahead and share um, the, the link to all the metadata. So we have a PDF for you with all that data and everything we talked about. So I just put it in chat. Okay, and then there'll be a link as well to the uh, tour that we did on there. Um, that's in the PDF as well. And then Grace can post that. I think we have that handy. Um, so you can use Google Earth to go back and do this. So finish your pages, um, add your metadata, your information. Um, Grace did a lot of research and, and got a really nice um, uh, story going for you. So you can finish this up. And um, then if you want, email me the your finished one and I'll, I'll put it on a gallery on the website with the tutorials. And um, I think one more poll, but I will also be sending you guys by email um, a, 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 a survey to if you don't mind just it helps me get better and stuff. But this final poll would be great. Thank you all for coming and uh, sharing your holiday weekend with us. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And if anyone has any questions, please email. I'm always available to answer questions. So um, thank you. And we'll leave this running for a bit and um, feel free to unmute uh, and we'll say goodbye. Wave goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It's wonderful. I'm so glad. Bye. Thank you all for coming and sharing. Uh, Thank you. Leave. Should I leave? Oh, should I leave? Yeah. Yes, we're done. We're so, bye. Bye, bye, bye Roseanne. Thanks so much. Bye. These field trips are so cool. Oh, I've been to Yellowstone four times, but I've never done any sketching. So next time, ah, you'll be ready, Bison. Yes. Bye. 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 Yes, this is my first time sketching. Thank you so much. Hey, oh, good. Send it. Thank send you. It. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh, sure. where, where do you go for the other field trips? Because this is my first one. Oh. I um, so I haven't decided on the next one, but you can go to the website, um, exploringoverland.com and go to the field arts section. And on the tutorials page, I put all of these are recorded and they're on there for you to look at. So um, we did one to the Lake District in England. That was a lot of fun. I did that with Ryan Pedersen. And then what did we do, Grace? What was the? Sabino Canyon. Sabino Canyon, thank you, sorry. Yeah, we did Sabino Canyon here in Tucson. I'm not sure what I'll do next. Maybe the Dragoon Mountains if it starts raining and cools off. Um, I'll, I'll actually go there and, and do my own um, 
360 views and stuff instead of Google Earth. And if you have ideas of places we want to go, I can do research. And um, these, these resources, the Google Earth and Google Earth tours are fantastic. Um, I, can, I can do all sorts of things. We can go to the Serengeti. <laughs> it's really cool. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a fun thing to do. It's fun to like get people from all over the world together, sketching together and seeing what we come up with. And that's exploring? Exploringoverland.com. Okay. And you'll see when you land there, it'll say um, field arts. We do a lot of different, we, we do overlanding and field arts, um, adventure travel and things like that. So you can find me there. Oh, great. I'm glad I found you. Glad you came. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Grace. Mm -hmm. Have a great one. Thank you. You too. Have a great rest of the weekend. Mm -hmm.